what the spindle does is take the cell's chromosomes, the, the genes of the cell, the, the, the substance of heredity, and when the cell is ready to, um, to take the next step, the step into the next generation, the spindle assembles and actually accomplishes that physically and spatially by segregating the DNA aside. So it's the thing that actually allows life to step from one generation into the next. It's the last thing that happens in, in duplication. It's separating things so that um, uh, a mother cell can be cut into two daughter cells. So for me, it's at the crux. And in fact, I sort of think of the, the spindle as something like biology's time machine. It's the actual object that allows life to step through time in this generational fashion. So it's very fundamental to understanding what life is. The spindle is the molecular motor that drives cell division. And if you base cell division as the basis of biology and how we all evolve, essentially, then the spindle becomes of central importance to research. You can see it here. The cell makes a copy of its genetic material. And so within one cell, it has two copies, but it needs to pull them apart and divide them into two cells. And what you can see is what we have in green, labeled a green fluorescent light, is the actual spindle, the actual motor that drives cell division. In blue, we have the genetic material, the DNA, the, inher the inheritable material of the cell. And in red, we have what's called the centromere. And these are the, the, the points on the DNA where the spindle actually joins and generates the forces that actually drive cell division and pulls it apart into two daughter cells. It's the motor that drives cell division. In order to colour these cellular components, we use a technique called GFP, or green fluorescent protein, which is originally isolated from a jellyfish, strangely enough. Through biotechnology, this protein has now been manipulated to provide a, a spectrum of colours. So we can um, create coloured versions of the genes that correspond to the pieces of the spindle that we're most interested in looking at, reintroduce those into the cell, and then visualize those directly. And when we hit it with a particular wavelength of light under a microscope, the GFP protein itself will give off enough light that we can photograph it. It's like putting a photographable tag on something that's not usually visible. The microscope allows us to see things that we can't see with the naked eye. So it allows us to visualize structures and processes in cells that we couldn't normally see in great detail. All the structures in the cell don't naturally have any color or fluorescence. So what we do so we can visualize them is we make them glow and one of the proteins that we use for this is called green fluorescent protein. So we can attach fluorescent protein molecules to the protein that we're interested in looking at and then follow this protein under the microscope. We can image them and watch them grow and divide over time, taking movies and taking images in 3D and watch the normal process of cell division and of the cells living in the dish on the microscope. That means, as a tool for us, it allows us to see what is not normal. So if we affect a gene function or treat the cells with a drug, we can apply the same imaging techniques and see what happens to normal cell division following these treatments. Science is a, a combination of individual endeavor asking very specific questions. Uh, there are also big questions that it, it can involve many things. So uh, it's important to, um, to establish teamwork. For example, in my mentorship of my younger colleagues, within my laboratory, people who are working on different specific questions that overlap uh, can benefit each other and, and, and do. So you can adjust the segmentation at any time. Okay. The infrastructure that the institution provides is absolutely essential uh, for us to be able to do our jobs um, and, and to be able to focus on them from our, our 
colleagues who, who clean the laboratories and our glassware, um, to the security people who, who make sure uh, we're safe, the postmen, the shippers, um, accounts who help me run my grants. Um, like any organization, it's not a company. This is not for profit, but um, all of these elements have to work together to allow um, us to do our very protected thing in the laboratory. It's very important to understand how the spindle works uh, because it's a major aspect of the way living cells work. It's uh, central to the, the process of, of growth and multiplication. There's a very pragmatic aspect to it, um, and that is that it's the target for some very important uh, chemotherapeutic drugs that are used in, in, uh, to, for treating cancer, solid tumors. Cahal was about three weeks old when I was diagnosed. The chemotherapy was, was very hard. It, um, you'd wake up in the morning, your pillow would be full of um, hairs, and it was, um, it was very hard on the system. But um, I had, after 16 weeks, I was finished that, and then I um, had surgery a couple of weeks later. And it was only when the surgery was over that I was fully and uh, confident that I had got over the cancer that the, um, they were told me that the chemotherapy had killed whatever cancer cells were in the tumour and that it hadn't spread to my lymph nodes so I was very um, relieved with that that um, the surgery had cleared it all as far as I was concerned. I was 10 weeks pregnant.